I want to do an example looking at a two-dimensional kinematics. It's going to be a particularly simple example, but I want to use it to be able to really get into uh, working with the vectors and understanding what that really means. So let's consider a trajectory that looks uh, like this. So 2t twice times the time uh, i hat plus 4 j hat. And I, I often, if the units are obvious, don't include them. I notice here that we're, you know, we're, we're in meters. So this right here is, is x as a function of time, and, and here's y as a function of time, which in this case is simply a constant. So let's get a graph, a motion diagram, really, to see what that looks like. I'm going to give myself a big picture here. And so this is time. Let's see. No, let's. we want x versus y. And so at t is equal to 0, it, the, uh, the position here, y is equal to 4 here. And then we mark our to give ourselves some equal time units. So this would be 2, 4, 6, and 8. So at t is equal to 1, my position is x equals 2, y is 4. And at uh, time is equal to 2 seconds, it's here in, in 3 seconds and 4 seconds. So I, I have this particle that's simply moving in two dimensions here in a straight line. And now I can represent each of these positions, my position vector, then on this graph, looks like this. So as the particle is moving to the right with this simple trajectory, th this is what the vectors look, look like at these points in time. And so we can sort of get an idea of the motion in our head of, as a function of time, what is happening to this vector function. As time goes by, the vector sort of stretches out as it points more and more to the right. That's what, what this looks like. Okay. And so if we want to go ahead, we can calculate then the uh, velocity vector, which is the derivative of this, and so we have 2, the derivative of 2t is 2i hat, the derivative of a, of a constant is 0, so there's nothing there, this is in meters per second, and so uh, the velocity is, is a constant, we can represent that on here, it's be, sort of between here and here, and then between here, there's sort of our average velocities like we did before, you can see that the velocity is a constant vector uh, over time, and it's always point, and it only has an x component, and it points here to the right. And so that sort of we can see what is happening to this vector as a function of time, which is essentially nothing. And so then, of course, our acceleration vector, which is the derivative of the velocity, is equal to zero. And so this, as I said, kind of a simple. Uh, uh, picture, but but I like the idea of of looking at this for a minute because we can sort of see it what what a, a vector function of time looks like. It's this this the movie of this yellow arrow as time goes on as it grows as it points to where the particle is at later and later times. Let's take a look now for a moment then at the uh, position, the magnitude of this vector. So we had vectors before and we calculated magnitudes and so now I want to do that since this vector is a function of time. So the magnitude of this vector is the square root of this, the uh, uh, sum of the squares of the components so that's 2t squared plus 4 squared. So this is uh, 4t squared. I can factor out this a factor of 4, which the square root of that is 2. So a little bit of al algebra gives me the magnitude 
of the vector, which is 2 times the square root of t squared plus 4. So before, when we had vectors, we were calculating magnitudes, everything was static. And so now we have a vector function of time, and so when we calculate our magnitude, it, it is also a function of time. This function of time is telling us how this vector, the, the, how the size of this vector is growing with time, which represents this magnitude. Okay, now when we were looking at vectors before, one of the things we learned about was the unit vector. And so the unit vector for any vector can be found by taking the vector itself and dividing it by its magnitude. So we can do that too here for this vector. So this is equal to 2 t divided by the magnitude, which is 2 square root of t squared plus 4, and this is in the x direction, that's this part, divided by the magnitude. And then, I'm um, worry about my space here, so this is plus, then 4 divided by the magnitude. 2 t squared plus 4, and that's in the y direction. So if I simplify this a little bit, I get my unit vector, which is equal to t over the square root of t squared plus 4 i hat plus 2 over the square root of t squared plus 4 j hat. Notice that my unit vector is also a function of time. And so th this is something I think, especially when we practice uh, vectors and unit vectors, especially since many of our exposure to unit vectors are the constant i hat and j hat, that a unit vector can also change in time. If I have a vector function of time, the unit vector for that vector function also changes with time. And so if we look back here to this graph, we can see what that means. At each point in time, as the, uh, let's see, here, they, there's a unit vector pointing in that direction, and at t equals 1, the unit vector is pointing in that direction. At t equals 2, the unit vector is here, and 3, and 4. And so as time goes along, the unit vector corresponding to that vector is also changing, because the direction is changing. And so our, we have uh, our unit vectors, which can change during time. Let's just cal calculate that quickly. So at, uh, I'm going to Let's save our formula for our magnitude. So at t is equal to 1, our function is equal to 2 i hat plus 4 j hat. From that we can easily calculate our magnitude, and that's 2 times the square root of 5. If I put 1 in here I get 5. And so then our unit vector is equal to 1 over the square root of 5 i hat plus 2 over the square root of 5 j hat. So that's just put 1 into here, 1, and then 1 into here. So if I go to my picture, 1, the this unit vector is the unit vector pointing in that direction at, at 1 second. Okay, let's do a couple more just for practice and to see how it changes. At t is equal to 2, r is equal to 4 i hat plus 4 j hat. And then we can calculate our magnitude, which is put 2 into here, and we know that's 4 the square root of 2. We also can just see it directly here. It's It's got equal components in the x and y axis. And so now, if we 
put 2 into here, we get uh, 1, 1 over the square root of 2, i hat. It's maybe even easier to see, well, I don't know, here we have 2, this is 4, uh, let's see, 1 over the square root of 2, j hat. So this is 2, this is 4, 4 plus 4 is, uh, we can, is 2 times 4, and so then uh, the, you get a square root of 2, the 4 comes out, uh, the square root of that is 2, that cancels the 2 up here, we have the 1 of the square root of 2. So, okay, maybe we can do that in our heads or not, but, uh, uh, and then there's also this 2 here, so you get the same in, in, uh, for, for both components. So this becomes our uh, unit vector, and it also has equal components on the x and y axis. So at t is equal to 2, we have a unit vector that points in that direction. And now just because we're on a roll, at t is equal to 4, r is equal to 8, i hat plus 4, j hat, our magnitude is now uh, 4 times the square root of 5, so our magnitude is growing just like we expect. And now if we put uh, t is equal to 4 in here, and trust my algebra, we have 2 times the square root of 5, i hat plus 1 over the square root of 5 j hat. In fact, the magnitudes of our components have just switched from before, and so now we have a unit vector that's pointing in this direction more along the x-axis than the y. So in this example we've seen sort of for a very simple uh, for a very simple trajectory, what that means graphically, and then how to interpret that vector function of time as it comes to evaluating its magnitude as a function of time, as well as its direction as a function of time.